Hi everybody, welcome back to another NACLO video. Today we'll be solving a problem from 2016 round two called what happened at the chess tournament. And as a very, very quick overview, NACLO stands for the North American Computational Linguistics Open Competition. It was formerly Olympiad when I took the competition. And basically it's an Olympiad where you get to solve linguistic, kind of computer science, NLP related questions. They require no background knowledge whatsoever, just a willingness to learn, uh, use some logic, and have fun. And so NACLO comes in two rounds. Round one, if you score well enough, usually like top 10%, you get to go to the invitational round, which is round two. By then you're called a semifinalist. If you score well enough, then you can go compete in the International Linguistics Olympiad. All right, so getting back to this problem, um, let's start from the description. So Hungarian is a Finno-Ugric language spoken in Hungary by about 10 million speakers and 2.5 million speakers in surrounding countries. Very interesting. And um, I just want to give like a heads up for anyone who's never done these problems before. Usually NACLU comes with some kind of introduction of some sort. Um, typically, it's not needed. It's like very good background information. Occasionally, they do have some very like good hints that they give inside so you should pay a little bit of attention but it's not super essential um all right continuing hungarian is often called a non-configurational language which means that a words are unambiguously marked for their role in the sentence and b the word order is not rigid but often determined by the conversational context the sentence is appearing interesting so this might be important this might not we'll see but it seems like what like the problem makers are trying to say here is like you might find like a pattern, but it's not completely rigid. So I guess don't panic if something doesn't exactly match with your intuition. All right. And so we are given these Hungarian sentences on the left. We are given their English translations on the right. And what the problem is asking us to do is match the Hungarian sentences with their English translations. And we're pretty much given nothing else. So... Yeah, we're just gonna have to start with what we're given. And my favorite approach with NACLO, always start out trying to look for patterns. Cause like the problem makers are not trying to trick you. They're trying to make sure that you're able to solve this problem. So there usually is a starting point somewhere. We just need to find it. All right, so my first, at first glance, what I see, I see like, I apologize if I pronounce these cause like I don't speak Hungarian, so I'm gonna butcher them. Uh, Valaki, I see Valakit. I see lots of these, Valkis, I see Senki, Nemver, Meg. To me, this is all a bunch of nonsense, but like, it seems like lots of words, you know, kind of repeat. And that is, that is very interesting at first glance. I don't know what it means, but it's just good to note. All right, and then looking over here at the English translations, let's look at the first one. No one beats everyone. Okay, who wasn't beaten by anyone? No one got beaten, someone beat Martin, I didn't beat anyone, no one beat Peter, etc, etc. And so the first thing I notice is all the verbs are the same. It's always beat in some con in some form, right? So there's beat, beaten, beaten, beat. So if I want to try to match these, like sometimes you can tell like, oh, if they're different verbs, maybe you can like look at what verb it is and match it to the sentence. But in this case, all the verbs are kind of the same. So I don't think that's really going to help me. What I do notice at first glance, like... Most of these are like everyone, who, anyone for like the subjects and the objects. But I do occasionally see like a proper noun. Martin, Peter. Uh, oh, I see another Peter here. And I guess when I think of like names, like even like across languages, names are usually special, right? It's kind of hard to like, I guess like miss a name when you're seeing it. And so let's see, I noticed Martin. And if I look at the Hungarian sentences over here, I see like Marcit. And like, I don't know if that's like just by guessing. I feel like that might mean something. And if I look at uh, Peter, where, where's Peter? Peter over here and then Peter over here, I see Pityat and Pityat. And all of them are capitalized. So. I don't know how Hungarian works, but that is very telling. If things are capitalized, it's very, very likely that it could mean something. So 
All right, I'm just marking those. And so instantly, there really is no other Martin on the English side. So I think, or I can guess like educationally that D probably corresponds with number 10. So I'm just gonna write that down. And so that gives us a great starting point. Someone beats Martin, so Martin. And I noticed like P with Peter on the Hungarian side and Peter on the Hungarian side, there's like an A in front of each proper noun. So I'm just gonna add that to it. I don't know really what that means, but like I can almost kind of assume that those go together. All right, so I have someone beat Martin. And then I have this Valaki, Megvert, Amarsit. So my assumption, well, like English goes by subject, right? Like someone and then beats is the verb, Martin is the object. And in this particular sentence, someone beat Martin means that someone is doing the action and they, meet, they beat Martin who is receiving the action. Interesting. So either Valky or Megver means someone or beat. So those correspond somehow. I don't know exactly how, but that's, I guess, a good guess. All right, so moving on. Now we have two sentences with Peter. And how is that going to help us? Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to figure it out. So we have no one beat Peter. Peter beat no one. Oh God, wait, those are literally the same sentence, right? No one beat Peter. Peter beat no one. They almost sound exactly the same, but there is a very, very slight difference. In F over here, no one beat Peter. Well, who's doing the beating and who's receiving the beating, right? So no one is doing the quote beating and Peter is receiving the beating. So I guess I can assume that no one is kind of like the action, right? The guy who's doing the action. And Peter is receiving the action. Whereas if you look at L, Peter beat no one. Peter is doing the beating over here. So Peter is doing the action and then no one is receiving the action. And that is also interesting to me. So no one in F is the subject, Peter is the subject in L. Beat, both of them are verbs. And in F, the object is Peter and L, the object is no one. And so how does that correlate in the sentences we have in Hungarian? Um, well, I see nem, vert, meg, they are almost the same, minus that e. And then we have senki, and then senkit. Interesting. So, I don't know how exactly these are split apart, but I do see, like, very, very subtle differences, like that extra t there or no t. And so that might give me something. Okay, so this is, like, kind of a good starting place. Now, I just want to go around and start looking for other clues because I don't really know how else to go off of this one. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go back to Martin? Because we most definitely know that Martin, like D, corresponds with number 10. And so that might mean something. So in this Martin sentence, we have like this megvert right we have like this kind of megvert oops that's the wrong place we have this megvert or whatever that means and if we look at um the peter sentences number three and number six i guess we also see kind of like a megvert it's not exactly the same but like it's almost the same and so what is like kind of the same in all three of these sentences someone beat martin no one beat peter and peter beat no one well, like, the word beat, the verb, is common in all three of these. And so if I know that all three of these have that in common, I guess I can make a kind of educated guess. And these are all hunches, by the way, that, like, some combination of Meg, Vert, and I'm going to use this, by the way, as just, like, my guesses and notes, the explainer answers. We'll figure that out later. So Meg, Vert seems to, like, or I guess Vert, Meg seems in some way to like mean beat. I don't know exactly how, but I do know that's a thing. And so if I assume that this is Martin right over here, and this is beat right over here, then what is left? This volaki, or however you pronounce that. And so 
If I look back at my Martin sentence, someone beats Martin. So if we took out beat and we took out Martin, then what's left is someone. And so I can kind of guess that Valky probably corresponds to someone. So let's just write that down just for now and pray that it's correct, I guess. And Nagla is kind of always about this. You're constantly like guessing and making hypotheses. And if your hypothesis doesn't work, you revise it. But let's just assume it works for now. All right, so we now kind of know what Volokhi is. And I kind of see Volokhi in other sentences too. We have Volokhi, we have Volokhi, we have Volokhi here. So it's, it's everywhere. And I guess I just underlined number one. And something very interesting that I noticed. I see Volokhi and I see Volokhit again. And this Megvert or this combination of Vert and Meg we can assume is some form of beat, some form of the verb. And so if this is someone, Valky is someone, and Valky is, it seems kind of like a, like some form of someone. And so do we see anything like that on our English side? Oh, if you look at H right over here, interesting. It says someone beat someone. Now that seems pretty accurate. Right, so B is in the middle, and then you have someone, and you have someone. However, like, what do you notice here? Valky, the first Valky, only has, like, Valky. And then the second Valky has a Valkit, right? So there's, like, an extra T. And so that is an interesting differentiation. So what is the difference between the first someone and the second someone, I guess, in English? Well, someone beat someone. The first one is a subject, and then you have the verb, and you have the object, because that's how English works. And... We have, we have two hypotheses here, right? So having that extra T, we could it could either be a differentiation between subject or ob object. So let's say we have a yes T category, yes T, and a no T category. So like maybe, maybe like no T, or let me like flip this around because that would be more clear. Maybe no T means subject, I guess. And maybe yes T means object. I guess that's one possibility. The second possibility is someone is doing the action, right? So like maybe the first someone is doing the action and the second someone is receiving the action. So maybe that's what's adding the extra T. So that could be the second thing, right? So the first someone is doing the action. So maybe no T means like you're doing the action and yes T means you're receiving the action. And so I don't know which one it is, but it could be either of those. However, what I do know is number one and H probably correspond with each other. So I can mark that down. All right. Now, where do we move on from here? Do, do, do. I'm also like kind of doing the problem just as I'm explaining it. So this is just a process for me as it is for all of you guys. I guess one thing we could go back to is Peter, right? So before we kind of got stuck at this whole Peter thing, and let me highlight the Peter sentences real quick because uh, it's getting real messier here. So we have no one beat Peter. And then we also have, where's the other Peter? Oh gosh, I cannot find it. Peter, Peter, where are you? Okay, Peter beat no one. That's right over here. And then if we look at the Hungarian, we have Pityat and Pityat. And so one thing that we did mark in the very beginning of doing this problem really is we have no one beat Peter and in F, no one is doing the action. Peter is receiving the action. No one's also the subject. Peter's also the verb or sorry, Peter is the object. And so based on both of our hunches, right? Like Peter over here is the object and is receiving. So like no matter which of our hunches is correct, this Peter, no one beat Peter, like letter F should have a T because Peter is acting as the object, receiving the action. So therefore, number three must be F. And so by default, L must be six. And does that make sense? Well, in this case, in L, we see Peter is the subject, 
and Peter is doing action, right? Peter is doing the beating. And no one is the object receiving the action. And similarly, we see here that Peter is does not have a T. So, whoops. So Peter is doing, or Peter is doing the action here. So that seems to make sense.